Hey everyone, it's John from Marco Learning. In this video, we're gonna go through our Common Apps together. So what I want you to do guys is open up your Common App in another tab um, and we'll work on it. Just so you know who I am, my name is John Muscatello. I'm the founder of Marco Learning. I've been helping people with college applications for almost 20 years. And in this video, I'm gonna answer questions live. We're gonna answer questions after the fact. So if you're watching this recording later, go ahead and post those questions and all of us at Marco are gonna come in and answer those. So what I'm gonna do is just log in, make sure I'm all set here on uh, Zoom and on to YouTube. And I'm gonna pull up my Common App for all of you to take a look at. And I've logged in as Marco Learning, um, but if you haven't made an account, it's super easy to make an account. Um, notice I've also got a Google Doc over here. That's a really great idea um, because that gives me a chance to make sure that, um, I don't know if I'm building an essay or building any kind of uh, personal statement or, or um, supplemental information or activities list, I have a kind of a working space apart from my main common app. So as you guys are coming in, say hello. I can see Antonio, C, uh, CBD, you, everyone. If you guys um, enjoy this video, press that like button and say hello to me. I'm gonna be checking on this chat as we go through um, the sessions. So, okay, this is my dashboard. I haven't filled out a lot of my common app. So I encourage you again, log in, pull up your common app and you can post questions. Um, and, and answer it. Even if as CBD, you're not a senior, you can uh, still hang out and learn how to do your common app, whatever you'd like to do. So in order for me to apply to colleges, I got to add a college to my uh, common app. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add my alma mater, New York University, and see if it comes up. I think it's a real college. Good. And it's on the common app. Not every college is. Remember, you are applying to the University of California system. You're applying to the University of Texas system. You might be using uh, the UT Apply Texas system. You might be using something else. You want to make sure you're using the right platform. Um, and you can just search on the Common Apps website for what colleges are available. So that's there. Then I go to my main Common App. Uh, and in this platform, I can fill out my name. My name is Marco Learning. Um, I have not used other names. Um, I'm a male. If you, um, if I don't feel like I fit into male or female categories, I can describe that here. I can put in a fake date of birth. And then notice I can fill out my address, contact details, all this information in the profile part of my Common App is super easy to figure out. So for those of you joining, again, we are filling out our Common App live. This is the Marco Learning one. Marco Learning is applying to NYU, hopefully it gets in. Um, Antonio is taking a break from Gov. So guys, let me know in the chat where you're coming from, um, whether any of you are working on your Common Apps. And if you like this video, press that like button um, and keep me posted on, on how this is going. So, um, what I'm going to then move on to is the family section. This is another pretty straightforward one, though, guys, one of the funniest things about the work that I do is how many times I have students who literally like no idea what their mom like does or where she went to college or whatever. It's like you live with your mom. You should probably know this. And you're like, I don't know what her address is. I don't know what her name is. Um, so when you're looking at things like your parents education, make sure you ask them. Um, if they went to college, you know, what the actual name of their institution was, get the right details here. Um, and that so you have the, the all of that correct. Under education, so the profile family section, guys, is super easy to fill out. It's your private information. We're not going to go through that together. If you have questions, talk to members of your family, your guidance counselor. Um, but I, most people don't have any problems with, with profile and family. The only one I'll point out might be this section. It's called um, demographics. Um, and demographics is what you identify as, as your ethnicity and race. And some questions, some students say, well, I identify as part of two racial categories. What do I say? What do I do? I think the answer is you say what's natural and honest for you. If you identify as a certain category of something, colleges want to know, tell them. Um, and there's no real correct answer to this. Um, there have been people will cite numbers like, well, if you're one eighth Hispano or uh, Hispanic or Latino, Lat uh, Latina, Latinx, then you qualify as that. But again, I think so long as you're answering the question honestly about what you are and what you identify as, it's totally up to you. Um, and then other questions about your language and citizenship, all of that is there. So let's go to education. Um, yes, and it looks like, <laughs> Uh, looks like some people are just procrastinating in here, though you are welcome to hang out as well and learn how to do this. And if you've got questions, let me know. What I'll do, since this is looking kind of smallish, is I'm just going to zoom in. So 
education is going to ask you about your school, whether it's a boarding school, whether you graduated from it, all of this information. It's going to ask whether you transferred from another school and fill out all that information. Make sure you give them all the data about grades 9, 10, 11, and 12. So if you were in one school in ninth grade, another school in 10th and 11th, and you're in your senior year in a in a third school, you need to list all of those institutions. If you took college credits somewhere, if you took courses at, at a college, you need to also list that information out um, and make sure that they have access to your transcripts. Um, that will, so if you take in some community college courses or done anything else, put that information in there as well. Pretty straightforward. Grades, sometimes they ask you to put in your graduating class size, your GPA. This is, notice the only one that's um, required is this approximation. I graduated in a class of 220 students. That's probably not exact, but that's around what it was. Um, and then if I don't know about my class rank or GPA, I can just leave all of that. Colleges will get this from your high school transcript. Um, so this uh, information here in grades is not really that important because your high school transcript will have your classes, your grades, and all the information that the college counselors need to, to figure out what they want. Um, and CBD, you're asking about what about APs? Those would be um, what you could do here. For example, if, you, if you're currently a senior and you're not, but let's just say you were in seven classes, you could list, let's say you were in um, statistics, okay, um, and the course level were AP, I could add that right there. So I'm in AP statistics, and then let's just say, I know you're actually in biology, right? And that's AP biology, put that there, and then you add the rest of your courses. This gives them a quick overview of what you're doing your senior year. Um, and so that's what the information you fill here. Again, so far guys, we're in our Common App, and it's pretty easy. Profile, pretty straightforward. Just ask family members what to do. F and family, same thing. Just get the right information from your parents and guardians. Education is your high school, any colleges that you've attended for credit courses, your grades and your current years. Honors, now this is an important section. You really want to make sure that you um, list out honors and awards that you've won. And this is a good thing to brainstorm in your Google Doc. So let's just say, and I'll kind of make this a wider document here. Um, I have an honors section, right? And I want to say I won, you know, first place. And this is academic honors in the academic decathlon um, for our history, which I may or may not have won in high school because I was a nerd. So in my honor section, that might be something that I want to put. It's kind of an activity. It's kind of an academic award. Maybe I won um, the 10th grade um, English award, you know, best student in the grade. Um, and I'm just kind of brainstorming everything I can think of for my common app. And I'm trying to just make sure that I've got academic honors that would be potentially impressive. True story, if you just try to do it all in the Common App and just drive by at once, you might forget something really shiny and impressive you've done in grades 9, 10, 11, and 12. So why not take a minute and get that right um, and use the information that you've got to um, really put on the best, put your best foot forward in front of uh, colleges and make sure that you're not losing um, any of, of the things that you've got um, available to you. And it looks like I'm frozen on YouTube. I'm not sure if that's um, the case. So let me just try this real quick. I wanna make sure that I'm here with you guys. Again, I'm John from Marco Learning and I've been helping students prepare for college admissions for a really long time. Um, and I'm here to help you guys uh, fill out your common apps. And so if you've got questions, let me know in the, uh, the live chat or let me know in the comments and I'll answer them after the fact. So I'm gonna share the screen I've got again here. I'm in back in my common app. I'm gonna put in my honors. And let's say I really believe in this 10th grade English award. Um, and I might be able to do things like this. There's not a lot of room. So I could say um, best student in grade in English award, okay, something like this. It's in grade 10 and it's a school level recognition. Now this hierarchy that they've given you is a very important one. A school level recognition is a very good thing. Good job if you won best student in your grade in English, that's a major achievement. But the more uh, selective the college you're applying to, the more they might wanna see 
a state or regional award. Um, if you won your county or you won your local state, I'm from New Jersey, so if I won the Burlington County um, Award, that could be really valuable. If I won the New Jersey State Award, that's even more valuable. I live in the United States. If I won a national award, like the Intel Science Competition, that's even better. And then, of course, if I win an international award, uh, that could be really uh, impressive, right? So depending on the college you're applying to, you do not need to have won uh, best student in the world in English in order to get into a good college, right? But they are paying attention to these levels and, and ranking them in this ascending order. I can add another honor. And what's nice is too, look at the way they set this up, guys. I can move this up or down depending on where I want. I can position all of my honors in a way that really puts my best foot forward. I want my best honors to float to the top. I wanna to make sure I'm being accurate in how I'm reporting this information. And every time I press continue, it's saving it for me. So I can always come back and move along. I filled out the grade section, honors I left incomplete. Indicate the number of community programs or organizations that provided you with free assistance in your application process. So if you've worked with a community based organization, you can put that information here. So, for example, let's say we worked with the Boys Club of New York, we can put that um, here as well. And then the mentor or person who helped you fill that out would add in information. And that's not a, a problem for you if you've worked with an advisor from a community based organization, but the colleges would like to know. Um, and then future plans, this part kind of a lot of times makes people very worried because they feel like they've got to tell people whether they're going to be an architect or in hotel management or in a, a scientific researcher. You don't. You can absolutely say here undecided. And I want to encourage you to press undecided if you're legitimately undecided. And I want you to be careful before announcing you're going to do engineering, biology, or some very intense and competitive field, make sure you've really thought that through. If you're going to be a biology major, for example, there are some colleges that are going to basically put you up against other biology majors and look for proof that five in AP biology, a 720 in SAT biology. Other colleges don't care. So it depends on individual colleges. It depends on your actual authentic interest. Um, so make sure that you answer this honestly, but don't feel pressure that you have to say something very fancy. You don't have to say that you wanna be a doctor. You don't have to say that you're gonna be something that you're not. Um, and remember only a few colleges, uh, co types of college programs really require you to commit to one major when you enter. So engineering programs require it. Art colleges can require it, but there are many other colleges. I went to the College of Arts and Science and they didn't require me to pick a major at all. So as you're filling out your Common App, remember you don't have to commit to this. Think this through, speak, speak about this with your teachers and your counselors about what specific things you wanna say. Um, so one thing, I got a question here from you, and by the way, thank you guys for joining. If you like this video, press that like button, post your comments and questions in this uh, question tab. You is saying, do we need to send our AP scores and SAT scores through the Common App? In order to send SAT and AP scores, you're actually going to do that through the College Board. So I'll just Google how to send SAT scores to colleges. And when I do, you'll get to the College Board's website. They're the people who make the SAT. And after scores are released, you sign into your College Board account, you fill out the forms, and you pay the fees. The fee, let's just see what the current fee is. Uh, the registration fee is $52. That's if you're paying for the SAT. And then to um, the score report, um, when you register, you pay $0. Additional ones will cost you $12 each. So you're going to be paying, remember, if you don't have an application waiver, you're going to be paying the application fee in Common App, as well as any SAT um, uh, score report request uh, fees here as well. And there are fee waivers available if you qualify. So pay attention to whether you qualify for fee waivers because you're on financial assistance or support in any way. Your guidance counselor at your school is the person to reach out to about this and um, see what to what extent the $12 is covered. So let's just say I know that I want to be a, um, I would like to be a, well, what's a good job for me? I would like to be an optometrist. Um, and to do that, I'm going to get an MD, let's say. So I'm announcing that I have this very specific career goal. And then I'm going to continue. Um, then I have the test taken. Now notice this section here, and this gets to use question. In addition to sending official score reports as required by colleges, not all colleges require 
the expensive official report, right? Some colleges will let you do something called self-report. Self-report means you tell them your score. If you get accepted, you're going to eventually send your actual score report to verify that probably, but you don't have to send out a million score reports with your application. So you can very often tell colleges, hey, this is what I got. I got a 26 on the ACT. I hope you believe me. Um, you don't want to get caught lying about that because they can absolutely rescind your application. So this system has worked very well because people know they're not going to get away with misleading people, that's a terrible way to approach the college process anyway. So you can, let's say I wanna add self-report some scores, I'm gonna put in my ACT um, and I'll continue. And then it's gonna add in the ACT test that I wish to report. I took it with writing, I'm not taking it again. I got, let's say I set a 26 and then I put in the date, each of the scores and I move along and fill that out. So that is reporting all of this. So great, great question you. Thank you for those of you who are just joining. I um, just wanna take a minute and again say at Marco Learning, we've got great resources to help you guys get ready for the Common App. If you haven't checked it out, definitely check out our guide to the Common App. It's on our website and I'll actually put it in here for you. Um, it's under, and in fact, I'll just show it to you real quick. It's pretty easy to find because it is right on the homepage of our website. So you go to markolearning.com, it's free AP resources. So we have study guides, lesson plans for teachers and the videos that we're doing here. That's Elena Vernon, that's me, then my dog is here somewhere. Um, but when you go to study guides, you will see that there are guides for AP English, history, social science, um, and college admissions. And this college admissions guide, the guide to the college essay is about 17 pages long and we walk you through each part of the essay. So definitely check that out. Um, and let's see, I'll just put this in here um, into the chat. This link will get you, in fact, I'll put the proper link here. Okay. Um, and if you click on that link, that should take you right to this page and you can download the guide. Okay, so back to the Common App here. Now I'm going to list activities. Now I have a whole video on our YouTube channel here about this. When you check out the playlist, I actually spend 10 minutes walking through it. But let's just really quickly look at it again. Uh, let's say I want to report a bunch of activities. I'm going to say that I was in debate because that's what was what I talk about. I was captain of the team in the 12th grade because I had no friends. Um, we can call it debate because that's what it was. And I can say, uh, describe the activity, including what you accomplished, any recognition you received. So notice, I want you to notice that this is where I put the honors related to my activities. That's distinct from the honors I had put under education. So under the education tab, I put like academic honors. Here, I'm going to be building out my activities list. And as I suggested earlier, it's just nice to have that Google Doc post all this information right in here. And so if you put your activities list, um, you, you build it in a Google Doc, you can come back to it over and over again. You can show it to a, your, your guidance officer, your English teacher, whoever's helping you with your application, um, and you can adapt and evolve as you go. So um, if I'm putting, for example, debate in here, right? I could add this information. I want to make sure I add things like the grades I did it in. Let's say I did it 10, 11, and 12. Um, I add any positions of leadership. So I said I was captain of the team. Um, and Denise, you're asking where I went to college. I went to NYU um, and I loved it there. I had a great experience. And um, when I was there, I also didn't actually participate in debate. And let me explain why. So one of the questions I'm going to get here, let's just say I, uh, you know, I won first speaker in regional finals, um, right? And I did this, let's say 10, 9, 10, or 10, 11, 12. I did during the school year. Um, this question is what I want to get to. I intend to participate in a similar activity in college. So I didn't participate in debate in college because debate in college might have been like 20 hours a week. I worked actually, when I was in college, I worked part-time for the Princeton Review, where I spent many years uh, helping students get into college, working on tests. If you say that you're going to participate in debate and newspaper and a sport and in a club and you're starting the French club, you're not really gonna actually be able to follow through with that, right? A school newspaper at college can be something like 
20 hours a week, uh, debate 10 hours a week, a uh, sports team 30 hours a week, marching band 20 hours a week. They're major commitments. They can be very competitive. So when you're filling out this part of the Common App, and I'll come back to it now, when you're filling out this part of the Common App, don't say that you're gonna participate in five activities in college. One or two is really plenty. Um, so I didn't intend to do that. Um, but this part is actually maybe the most important. A lot of people like to round up on the hours that they spend inside of an activity. Do not do that, right? When you're, when you're talking to a college about anything, just be honest, tell the truth. So for example, if debate was around 14 weeks per year, and I averaged, let's average the weeks I was just prepping and the weeks I was actually competing, I averaged about three to four hours a week, I'll say 3.5. That's very realistic. This is a student who spends three and a half hours a week for a couple of months doing debate. And I don't remember exactly how many hours it is, but I would, if I were filling this out, I would fill out an honest answer. People like to round up. They like to say, well, I really, I really spent like nine hours a week and it was really 24 weeks a year. And they start doing this and they start getting to a point where they're filling out like 122 hours a week of activities. Do not do this. I emphasize this in the video. Get these numbers accurate. Colleges know what average numbers look like. If you do spend a ton of time in an activity, definitely let them know that. I also want to say one other thing real quick before we move on. Look at what their categories of activities include. Arts or music, clubs, community engagement, family and community engagement. Think of anything in, a, in a, your local township, your synagogue or church, um, something about a society in your, you know, uh, and, uh, the Italian American society of central New Jersey, which exists, right? Making sure that you're, you're clear about what those organizations do. Family responsibilities. If, you're, if you have to watch two younger siblings, that counts, guys. They want to know that you're spending your time doing that. If you're really good at quilting blankets, tell them they want to know. Not everyone learning the guitar is doing it at school. Tell colleges what you do. Of course, sports are a big deal if you're being recruited. They definitely want to know if you've had a job or you've volunteered. And then any other experiences, activities are really a wide range of options. You can do whatever you want. So activities is a great section. Again, we've got a video of this on our YouTube channel. Um, and in fact, I'll pull that up for you. Actually, I'm not going to pull it up because then it's going to like be frame and frame. But we have an activities list. Um, in fact, I'll pull this up here and post inside of this chat. Um, this link is, um, is right there in the chat. That's our activities list video. So um, you fill out the activity section. You have um, all of this information. Again, it's going to save it for you. As you add activities, notice you can move them up or down depending on the positioning. I like to do that inside of my Google Doc as I'm adding and building activities. Um, put your best activities to the top of the list. Best means the most number of years that you're involved, the biggest commitment of time, and the most achievement you've made. If you're captain of the team, you're the founder of the club, you're editor-in-chief, tell people about this. Um, now, here's a question. I'm going to check out the chat. I've got some great comments from everyone um, who's joined here, and I appreciate all this. Alex, Alexandra, you asked, Hi there, sorry, this isn't a Common App related, but you know if it's too late to apply for the SAT for November, um, <clears throat> you wanna try to do better. It probably is, but the best place to check is the College Board's website, and that's right here. All the registration fees and deadlines. Um, let's actually take a look right now. What are the deadlines for the, for the upcoming test? So November the 7th, uh, I stand corrected. It is not too late. You have two more days. For November the 7th, you can still register on October 27th. Um, and this again is just on the College Board's website, just Google SAT, how to register SAT test dates and registration. One of the first things that's gonna come up is this. Um, and so you just click the register button, you pay the fee and you go through all the, the process. Notice that there are SATs available November the 7th, December the 5th, 
Um, and if you're applying regular decision this year, these two windows are just wide open for you. Now, I know that there's it's been a real mess this year, right, with the pandemic. Um, remember, many colleges have gone test optional. They're not obligating you to submit an SAT or ACT if you cannot safely take the test. We haven't really had a full, complete, fair SAT in this country since oh, but January, right? So we're looking at a, almost having lost the entire year 2020. That's why many colleges are test optional, test flexible, test blind for this year. If you are a junior right now, though, pay attention because next year we don't know what every college's policies are going to be. The best advice I'm hearing is to continue to assume that the SAT and ACT will, will be on the table, will play a role in fall of 2021. So keep that in mind. Don't write the tests off completely. Um, though I do have a video on our channel about whether the SAT and ACT are over, um, where I explore some of the challenges that SAT and ACT are going to face as they recover from this. Great. That was a great question, Alexandra. Thanks for asking. Thanks for watching. Those of you who are joining, I'm John from Marco Learning. We're going through the Common App. Um, and if you like this video, just press that like button. Let me know in the chat any questions that you've, um, that you, you've got. CBD is here. She's pointing out that she's a junior paying attention to the SAT and ACT for next year. And um, a couple questions I'm seeing, and I might be saying your name wrong, so I apologize, Anaid. Um, as, as I have an average GPA, but I'm involved in many extracurriculars and sports. Do I have a chance to even get into any schools? I'm currently applying to school right now. So one bit of encouragement, I'm going to uh, stop sharing for a minute. A lot of people think of college admissions as like Harvard admissions, right? They think of like top 20 or top 50 schools and it's so competitive and no one can get in. Guys, there are 2,000, more than 2,000 colleges and universities in America and many of them are begging for you. There are a lot of colleges that have acceptance rates that are that are much lower than the most competitive places in the world. There's a whole range, right? So Harvard and Princeton, a lot of these places have 5% acceptance rates, but there's a lot of places with 20% acceptance rates, 40% acceptance rate, 75%. Pay attention to those rates, those averages. There's a great opportunity for you to succeed, even if it's not Harvard, Yale or whatever. So that's one thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say is, remember, this is something to think about. Many colleges in America are completely broke, like broke. They need people to enroll in their college. So while we're, you know, many of us are banging on the door to get into the best colleges, there's a lot of places that are banging on the door, begging to get you to enroll. Look for those places. A lot of times people call them backups or middle schools, but they're often amazing schools. And you look at their financial aid packages, you look at the opportunities, and you might get an amazing chance to get a degree from a, from a good institution without spending as much money. And they really want you. They really want you to enroll. They need you to enroll. So um, I hope that answers your question. And I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Joseph, you're saying as a senior, do you recommend doing an SAT, even if we have a sturdy background within grades? It depends on you, Joseph. Um, if your college is using the SAT for scholarships, you have to pay attention. Some colleges have said, yeah, we're test optional. You can send a test or not, but actually we still are using it for scholarships. Um, so don't feel that you have to put your health at risk or stress out too much. But if, you, if an SAT is going to help your application, then go for it. Um, so as a low key kind of thing, can keep that on your radar. Um, and Antonio is asking SAT or ACT or both. My best advice, guys, take a full length practice test of each of the SAT and ACT and use that to make your, your de decision about which one to take. Um, yeah, and it's and let me know in the chat um, if you've got other questions. CJ's question, do you recommend talking about extracurriculars in your essays? Great question. Let's actually go to the essays. We've got a whole bunch of uh, videos about the, the personal statement that I want to show you real quick, but it's all in this part here. The personal essay. I understand, blah, blah, blah. I have to fill this out. Required. Now, these are the seven prompts. I have one video on our channel right here on YouTube. So if you haven't already subscribed to our channel and you'll get notifications, we're going to be releasing lots of new videos, but I've got them on all seven prompts. I've got them on how to draft and modify your uh, essay. It's got to be 650, or it's, it's got to be between 250 and 650 words, so about two pages double spaced. 
You definitely don't write it in here, write it inside of a separate document where you're working on your Common App. And your goal is to tell a story that only you can tell. Um, as a, just an example of the kind of prompt, uh, for example, let's say I pick this one, the first one, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that's so meaningful, they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. So notice they want you to tell a story. They want to talk about something that's meaningful to you uh, right here. Um, and that it's something that relates to you as a person. Notice they didn't say what are your academic skills? So CJ's question, do I recommend talking about extracurriculars? Yes, if that extracurricular relates to one of these prompts. Um, for example, you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. Maybe that was in the context of the debate club. Uh, maybe there was an accomplishment or an event that happened on the sports field. You do have to be careful that you don't write a job resume essay. A lot of people make this mistake where they go to the personal essay and they're like, okay, I'm gonna impress them. But ninth grade, I did this and 10th grade, I did this. And then I got straight A's and I was the best student in Mrs. Johnson's biology class. That's not what this is about. This is about you as a person. What are you passionate about? What do you love? Who are you? And if I don't know you, so I don't, I can't see any of you, you're chatting with me on YouTube, that's awesome but I don't know you. So how can you in a 500 words, 650 words, tell me about who you are? Um, what are the values that motivate you to go out there and get involved in the election? What are the things that make you write a letter to your congressman or woman? What are the, um, what's something that you, oh, one of the questions, uh, question six, describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. What do you imagine? What do you love? Um, talk about those things. And if that's about an extracurricular, good. If it happened in the classroom, that's also good. But don't try to impress me. I'm gonna use your transcript with your grades and your, your uh, classes to see whether I'm impressed by you academically. I'm gonna to listen to your teachers, to teacher recommendation letters to see whether in fact, I think that you're academically qualified to attend my college. I wanna to get to know you as a person a personal statement, make it personal. So that's my advice to you. I think you can use activities, but you got to be careful. It doesn't become about the activities. It's got to be about you. Um, so CJ is asking also, am I familiar with the UC application? Would I be able to model the UC application essays after the Common App essay? Very often, yes, right? So Apply Texas, um, Coalition, uh, the UC essays, you can often, if it's a personal generic thing, you can do that. As proof, let me show you where it says that on the Common App. <laughs> right here, share an essay on any topic of your choice. It can be one you've already written, one that responds to a different prompt, or one of your own design. So if you, CJ, if you can't take your 350 word California essay and make it fit for the Common App, one of these prompts, you can make it fit for the seventh. I recommend bending it a little bit more into one of these prompts, right? This one or, or one of the other ones. And again, we have a whole video walking through each of these prompts and, and how to build this. A couple other questions. Um, what is, I'll get to scholarships at the end. Remind me, Antonio, to get there. Um, Yu Yang is asking, when you super score, do they look only at the top score? So in the testing, if I list multiple tests, they will uh, super, and if they, if they do super score, they're going to take the highest of each section. That's what super scoring means. And if they see that you had a lower number in one section, that happens. Um, so it's not a big deal. That's hopefully an answer to your question. Super scoring is taking the top of each of them. Um, so CBD is asking a very scientific question. Thank you. Um, CJ, good. Yeah, so if there's any other questions, let me know. What I'm gonna do is keep going. So we, we add in the personal essay. Disciplinary history, now this is significant. Some of you have had a disciplinary incident on your application um, where you were suspended from school. Uh, let's see, let's see, from ninth grade, uh, whether related to academic misconduct, or behavioral misconduct, or something that resulted in disciplinary action, probation, suspension, removal, dismissal, or expulsion. If this ever happened to you, you have to say yes, um, because it's going to be on your records and you always have to be honest, but you get 400 words to explain the incident. Don't go through a long apology. If you did something wrong, say that you did something wrong and that you have turned away from that. 
and you've grown from the experience, briefly describe the situation without making a million excuses, without oversharing, and include that here. I believe for next year's applications, they're actually removing this question. But for now, the question is here, make sure you're being thoughtful, you're honest, but not oversharing, you're um, you know, reflecting back on mistakes that you've made, uh, but not groveling and, you know, at a certain point, I don't, you might not need 400 words. You might be able to explain it in just a few sentences to say, for example, I was put on academic probation because I had a C in one of my classes and I plagiarized part of an essay. That was a major mistake. I've never done it again, et cetera. Um, good. And then there's an additional information section. A lot of people ask about this. Um, there is a COVID question where if you want to talk about the impact of COVID on your application, 250 words. Again, we have a whole video dedicated to this right in the playlist. So after this video, check that out. Uh, it's a great opportunity for you to really think about this COVID question, whether you want to answer it and what you would like to say. Um, if you do want to add additional information, my warning to you is don't bore these people with stuff they don't need to see. I know that's a, maybe a mean way to approach it, but think about it this way. If I'm a typical college admissions officer, I'm being bombarded with like thousands of pieces of information. One application I might spend eight to 10 minutes going through. And in that eight to 10 minutes, I see you got terrible grades in ninth and 10th grade. You, um, your essay was confusing. Your letters of recommendation said like, you're not that good of a student. I'm not accepting you. And I'm kind of moving on. Um, but let's say you have a good transcript and you know, maybe there's a bad grade in 10th grade, not a big deal. I like your application. I loved your personal statement. Teachers say you're great. The additional information session needs to be something that adds something specific and meaningful to the, your application. If it just is you talking more, I don't want to, I don't need that. I need something specific and real that is not reflected accurately in your application. It might be something personal. Um, it might be something academic. It might be an important insight. It does not have to be a full 650 words. In fact, I believe, yeah, the minimum is just one word. So you might be able to include five sentences that just say, hey, one thing that's not in my application is this. And you say that formally. Um, so that uh, finishes up this main part of the application. And this is uh, the writing part. And then there's, um, my college right here. Um, we need to know your most current recent courses, etc. That that goes under the education section. A couple other things I want to say. There was a really great question earlier um, about uh, where was it about scholarships? I think it might have been Antonio. What is your advice about merit-based scholarships? So couple things, um, Antonio, I want to encourage you, go to this tab inside of Common App to look at the whole picture of scholarships, the FAFSA form. FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. You definitely want to fill this out ASAP. And by you fill it out, I mean your parents or guardians. Whoever is legally in charge of you should go fill this application out pretty soon. Uh, it opened on October 1st. Um, and what it is, is your parents or guardians need to report their financial information regarding their taxes and assets and liabilities, a bunch of old people stuff that you don't do. Um, and that will help the colleges figure out your financial need. And A, do you qualify for work study? Do you qualify for scholarships or grants? That's what they're going to use. But Antonio is asking about merit-based aid. Uh, and merit-based aid is based on the quality of your application Colleges sometimes publish those numbers, sometimes they don't. So actually, when I when I went to NYU, they offered me merit-based aid. I had good enough scores and transcripts that they threw some money at the overall price of my application. Um, and that brought that down. I used AP credits to graduate a year early. So my family and I saved a lot of money on, a, on our uh, on NYU, like the major actually majority stake of it because I graduated a year early and I used merit scholarships and I lived off campus the last year. I found all these ways to save money and work through college. So as you're looking at the big financial picture, the most important thing is FAFSA. And the second and third most important things are merit-based aid and all these other uh, bits of information that I'll recommend here. So on my Common App dashboard, it'll tell me what I have in progress. My list of colleges right now, that's only the one I went to, NYU. The actual guts of the Common App, the easy stuff, profile, family, education, testing, 
Um, but then the more important things, we have videos again on each of these activities and writing, and then you can use their feature to add in more. They have more than 900 colleges here on the Common App. So I want to make sure that I've answered all of your questions. CBD is asking about, should she write about her appendix? Um, a very impactful story. Yeah, if you, if that you feel like it's not oversharing, it is a little bit in the YouTube chat, um, then that's fine. You know, you write about things that are meaningful to you that tell the college admissions officer what you want them to hear. The key guys is spending tons of time working on your essays so that you're not slapping it together on November 1st or January 1st at midnight. Make sure you're putting your best foot forward. And that's why I recommend the guide we have on our website, as well as um, all of our videos on, on our playlist where I go through activities, COVID uh, prompt, the main application things, how to make an essay that stands out, and your timeline, how to structure the fall of your senior year. We're in late October right now. What are you doing in November and December? So CJ saying, thank you. I'm really glad I could um, help. Yes, CBD, awkward. Um, CJ, the, uh, let's see, the UC schools say something on their website that they look at 14 factors. Um, determine if they should admit someone, completion of special projects undertaken in the context of your high school curriculum or in conjunction with special school events, projects, or programs. What do you think this means? So one of the things is, did you complete a junior year project? Did you work in a lab? Did you do an AP capstone research or seminar project? Did you volunteer to help the school do a fundraiser? Um, projects, programs, was there some kind of project-based participation that I might not necessarily see on your transcript? Some, uh, so for example, where I teach, the school I teach at has a project for juniors where students sometimes work in a lab or they make a short film or they write an essay. Um, and that's an important part of our, our program. It doesn't necessarily make it into the application. So that could be what they're thinking of. Uh, Mark is asking how early is or too early to start on college applications. If you are a senior, get started tonight um, because why not, right? Early decision is about less than a week away. Uh, regular decision is about nine weeks away. If you are a junior, what you wanna be thinking about is how can you thrive this crazy pandemic year on in your classes? How can you succeed in your activities and really make a difference in spite of all the challenges we're facing as a, as a society, as a country, uh, as a global community. What, how do you overcome that and really put your best foot forward? Um, that would be my advice if you're a junior or younger. Uh, remember that the Common App is actually going to reset going into next year. The prompts could be different. So if you're a current junior, don't get too wrapped up in writing your, your essay. We don't know what the Common App will necessarily look like. You got to focus on your academics. Um, and, and again, I'm not sure if I'm saying it on Aid. Correct me if I'm saying your name wrong, it's rude. I don't mean to say it wrong. I'm deciding between UCs and out-of-state universities. Do you think you'll save money? You live in California. So one thing is the California, the UC system is one of the best university systems in the world. It, you do get a better price as a California resident. I'm here in New Jersey. When I applied in high school, I was never gonna get access to California in-state tuition. So definitely have the UC system on your list. One way to figure this out, though, is to look at if you apply to, let's say, a couple of the UCs and you apply out of state, if you can afford the application fees, send them out and let them send back to you the financial aid reports because you might qualify for a whole lot of deductions off of your tuition at another college. So you're looking at a college in Texas, you're out of state, and that college has all this scholarship money, and you get a letter from them. Turns out you get almost a full ride. Might be cheaper to go to the college in Texas. Really depends on the quality of your application, what you're doing with financial aid. And that's where um, you, uh, that's how you figure this out. So again, on the Common App website, they have financial aid information, fill out that FAFSA uh, uh, form. And CBD, what's a great point? I should make a video on what juniors are doing, what juniors should be doing. Here's the video, ready? You could screen grab it or whatever. Here's the video, um, focus on your grades. Today is October 25th. Focus on your grades this year. Do as best as you can in the classes that you're in, on your AP exams. Try to have fun in the rest of whatever's left of 2020. Enjoy yourself and thrive in, the, in your classes. You do not need to worry about filling out the Common App right now. And think, you know, what teachers might write your letters of recommendation? What can they say about you? Um, you know, CBD is the best. What are they going to say? Are they going to say that you were helpful to your peers, that you were always participating, no matter whether you were virtual or in person? Um, are they going to say, 
Um, yeah, well, great. You've got a good grade in your class. Keep it that way. Go for high scores in your AP exams. And then next summer, worry about a lot of this stuff. Now, along the way, you should come up with an SAT or ACT prep plan. It's a little bit of a crazy time right now, but um, you can definitely take the SAT and ACT at any point over the next really 14 months for regular decision in fall of 2021. Um, Carlos is asking, early uh, action deadline is on Sunday and I haven't sent my application yet. That's fine. You don't have to send it until then. I say you should try to, um, if it's one week from today, try to send it by Wednesday of next week. Um, give yourself, kind of go work it full time, get as much help as you reasonably can and and work through each part and work through each one of the videos on our on our YouTube channel, guys, because we, we can help you with all of this. Um, and CBD, you're taking that PSAT. Good luck with that. Chloe, should I apply regular decision if I'm able to improve my standardized test scores by December? Would not sending a standardized test score impact my application? Chloe, that's such a good question. It's so hard for me to answer. I, I have been doing this for, yeah, 19 years now. And every year, it's kind of the same stuff, right? Like SAT, ACT grades, it's so straightforward. Um, but this year, the calculation's weird because colleges have said like 100%, period, with a T, that like you, it's optional. You can send an SAT or ACT and it won't harm your application. I think I heard that something like Ohio State University has said that like, two thirds of their applicants so far have not submitted an SAT or ACT score. So it's straight up literally optional. But some people are counting on a high SAT or ACT score to boost their application. They're counting on that score to help. And that, that sounds like that might be part of what your strategy is. So to you, I would just say, um, if you can safely take an SAT or ACT and you believe that it will help you, go for the gold, go for it. If you don't get it, you will not, according to these colleges, they're insisting they will not take it, you know, use it against you. I think the colleges are also kind of sending mixed messages though, right? Because some are saying, oh, well, we're not gonna use it for admissions, but we're gonna use it for scholarship, like consideration. So what does that mean? Like, I, oh, I, can't, I have to like pay for this. So I'd like to really like submit the score or, you know, we'll, we'll consider scores if you send them, but if you don't, don't worry about it. Well, if you can get a really great SAT or ACT score, you've got an advantage, you just do. So that's why I'm struggling to give you really straightforward advice about this. Um, I wish I wish it was clearer um, what the colleges were, were doing. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, the PSAT this year was its own thing. And then Anaid, there is a section in the Columbia University that asks for interest in podcasts or books. That's right. That's in the supplements section um, that you'll get that each individual college can add. And Columbia has its supplements. Do I add why I like them or do I just list? I'm so stuck in this section of the application. One clue for that, Anaid, is that you want to look at the word count. So if they say, if they say, if the verb is list, like list podcasts and books, just list them. That's the verb. And sometimes it's like 100 characters or words or something. So you know it's pretty small. If they say describe why or explain why, well, then they want more of that elaboration. Remember, they already have plenty of words from you. So a lot of people like to add in a, a lot of extra stuff. There's almost a really good minimalism in an application, right? Like fill out the main essay, fill out the COVID-19 one, only use additional information if you need to, and follow those instructions. If they say list, um, list them out. If they ask you to describe or talk about them, then do that. So CBD, I guess I'm gonna have to bring Marco in on the, um, on the Instagram live. Marco is my dog, of course, the founder of Marco Learning. Um, and he'll be there, I guess, to answer questions later if I go live. So guys, I really appreciate that you have spent your um, evening with me. If you have questions after this is over or at any point, just post them in the comments thread. You can follow us and DM us on Instagram. We also uh, chat with people like CBD and, um, and we're happy to answer any of the questions you guys have. Good luck. Do not stress about every part of this application as we just went over. It's pretty straightforward. You know, you've got the activity section. We've got a video for you on that. You've got the common app essay section. We've got a video for you on that. Take your time and reach out to us however we can help you. We're here to help.